Hey, I'm Kerry Smith, and I'm sitting here with Amar Shaw, and we're both with Client First Capital. And today we're talking about Roth conversions. And, you know, Amar, to me, the idea of having tax-free withdrawals from my IRA or my 401k during my retirement is very appealing, right? Um, but at the same time, you know, it seems like it just seems like maybe it's more complex than just simply you should do a Roth conversion. Right. And so um, so I thought we would go in, you know, a little bit deeper on some of the special circumstances around um, Roth conversions. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Look, Roth conversions, there's a lot of pros. There's a lot of cons. Right. Uh, I think Roth IRAs are the best thing since sliced bread, but it's not a forced decision to, to convert money to a Roth. And like you said, there's a lot of special circumstances and, you know, calculating the Roth conversions. There's a lot of calculators online. You can find, we like the one that's on Schwab's website, which takes into a lot of layers of, uh, into account. Uh, you got to figure out how much of it's going to be taxable, how it impacts Irma because Irma will affect your Medicare. But the real pro of a uh, why you do Roth conversions is that you're paying the taxes now to have tax free money later in life. And this is really to benefit you when potential tax rates may be higher. Uh, if you're widowed, then now you're in a lower, uh, higher tax bracket. So those dollars are more of it's tax free. But the downside is, is you have to pay that tax bill up front and therefore you have less money working for you. So there's there's a lot of special circumstances. So let's look at the first one, um, longevity issues. So uh, Carrie, I mean, with longevity, nobody has a crystal ball, right? And so if you live a really long life, then you have more time for that Roth conversion to make up the tax penalty that you have to pay up front, right? If you have a shorter lifespan, let's say if you've got diagnosed with cancer or something like that, you know, you have less years to actually benefit from the Roth conversion, right? So usually what we've seen on average takes seven to 10 years to break even uh, on the tax bill. And then you're in the green after that, right? Okay. But um, let's say so you're married filing jointly and one spouse is diagnosed with a health event and has three years left to live. Well, we know the surviving spouse will be in a higher tax bracket because the tax brackets shrink when you're a single mm -hmm. taxpayer and you'll lose one standard de deduction, right? So in that circumstance, from a financial planning perspective, it may make sense to take larger chunks and do Roth conversions in those three years while you're filing married filing jointly to maximize the existing tax brackets so then the surviving spouse doesn't have as much RMD, doesn't have as much need um, that in, in, the, in those higher tax brackets. Okay. So, you know, yes, it's true. We don't have a crystal ball and not everyone has a diagnosis of, you know, you have three years, but should we be considering, you, you know, our family longevity, our current health, right? And, and those sorts of things. And if if my family typically has longevity and I'm healthy, right? Um, so we should be considering those those types of things um, in our decision to um, to convert or not convert. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like even also, if you're thinking about moving to another state, let's say you retire in California where I'm at, and your children live in Arizona where Carrie's at, and you're thinking that I'm going to move closer to my grandchildren. Well, now you're going to be in a lower tax state. So it probably doesn't make sense to do those Roth conversions when you're in California and pay higher taxes when you can be in Arizona and do them later in life as well. Yeah. And the opposite could be true. If uh, if you're in a lower state, lower tax state and you're going to move, you might want to make the conversion sooner and before right. you move, right? Yeah. Um, so just the opposite could be true. Yeah, very good, yeah, good point. Absolutely, absolutely. And let's look at like, you know, you can have tax events. So we know the window of opportunities from 59 and a half to 73. But in between that window, you also have social security turning on and you'll have potentially a pension turning on. 
right? So there could be years where those things haven't turned on yet, and they give you more flexibility or control to do Roth conversions. Versus when those pensions and social securities do turn on, it could limit the amount of room in that existing tax bracket. Okay. And those are both very predictable events, right? Which should make your planning on if this is a good idea or not, you know, somewhat, you know, somewhat predictable. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And when we look at like, uh, let's say, a, a gifting, right? Like some individuals, um, they're not, they don't need the money in their IRAs and they're just going to leave that legacy asset as long as possible. And then it'll eventually go to their children. Well, you know, there's two circumstances. Either your children will be in the same tax bracket or lower than you or, or higher, right? If they're in a lower tax bracket, then it's probably better for them to pay the taxes on those assets, right? So let it grow more and let them pay the taxes on their distributions, you know, over their 10 years. And if, uh, if they're in a higher tax bracket, well, maybe it's, you know, you consider doing the Roth conversions, not for yourself, but for them, right? Right. Is that they'll inherit something that's tax free for their life, uh, for 10 years of their life. Okay. So, you know, with, with um, conversion strategies, but it's not an all or nothing, right? So I could convert what I feel like I need now that I might use in my lifetime, but keep in there what I feel might go to pass to charities or, or children if I decide to pass it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so that's a great uh, part of financial planning is that you don't have to do all, you don't have to convert all your IRA. The goal is not to convert all your IRA. It's right. just to convert the part that, you know, from a legacy standpoint that you want to give to your children. Now, charities is an interesting one that you mentioned because charities don't care if they receive an IRA asset or a Roth IRA asset. Right. So in that case, if you if your IRA assets are going to charity, there's no point in you paying the taxes to convert it to a Roth, and then to not use it and then transition that to a charity. Right. So you'd probably be better off or the charity would be better off receiving an IRA rather than a Roth IRA. Right. Okay. I think another one that we have on here is um, if somebody's a solo individual, right? So if you're divorced, if you're widowed, if you're uh, just a single person, then you might find yourself looking at a Roth conversion and scratching your head saying, why would I want to pay extra taxes? Right. I mean, you're in the absolute uh, tightest tax brackets and you only have one standard deduction. Right. So there are very few circumstances where it will make sense. And those are really on the thresholds of the IRMA calculation. Right. So if you're pushing against a threshold, then we're not looking at the tax bracket, but we're looking at the IRMA threshold and converting up to that dollar amount. So that way we can keep you in a lower IRMA um, Medicare tax uh, surcharge for as long as possible. Okay. How about people who have non-deductible IRAs? Now that's another special circumstance because the amount that you convert is a calculation of your total IRAs and the, the percentage that's pre-tax, right? So you'll need to work with your CPA or financial advisor, look at your tax return, look at the 8606 to to get your cost basis in the in, in your IRAs and then there's a calculation to see how much you should convert so in most cases if your investments have gone up right you're going to convert a larger dollar amount from uh, IRA non-deductible IRA combo split than you would from just uh, straight everything being pre-tax because a portion of it is tax free, right? So you're converting more to get it on to uh, the Roth, Roth IRA okay. side. Yeah, good. So again, special circumstances, there's some nuances there, there's some calculations that you have to do. And typically, you want to pair a Roth conversion with uh, financial planning, in terms of, you know, moving life events, you know, that, that window of opportunity, but also with other things that you may be doing. So the, the market environment may be such that, you know, this is 2008 and we can convert more shares of a security that you like from an IRA that's taxable to a Roth IRA 
and get all the growth on the on the tax free side, right? So market fluctuations definitely do play a part in terms of timing of strategy, as well as pairing it with uh, you know doing a, a year where you have maybe extra deductions or you're funding a donor advised fund and you're going to be itemizing that year. All those play a part in terms of determining if this is a good year to do a rock conversion. Okay. So, you know, Mar, it sounds like, yes, Roth conversions are a good idea. It's a great way to, to pay less taxes overall, right? Over and, time, yeah. Over time. Yeah. And there's some considerations um, that you need to be aware of to just to ensure that it's the best strategy for you. Absolutely. And I think working with an advisor or tax professional to figure that out for you based off of the, what you want to see happen is very important. Yeah, I agree. So, um, so I'm going to wrap this up here and, and just say, you, you know, if, if you need help with this type of strategy or other complex strategies, it's a good idea to reach out to a financial planner to work with someone with that you have the right financial strategy, you have the right tax strategy, you have the right estate planning, all of these things, and that everything is is working together. And you know, if you need some help with those conversations, I would say reach out to us at Client First Capital. Um, we'd be happy to meet with you and just talk about your situation and make sure that that we can have something tailored for you. Also, um, you know, you can click below and sign up for our newsletter um, where we you know, distribute videos like this, but also have some great articles that go in depth on, on several different uh, financial topics. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Carrie. All right. Thanks some more.